Hey, what's up everyone? Ronix with it and after I need this story, I'll show you guys how I retouched this very image in Photoshop. I've been getting so many questions about me doing a tutorial about how I retouched this image. So this story is for you guys and it is upon your request that I'm making this very tutorial. And for those who would love to learn about how I uh, did my adjustments for the raw file of this image, I'm going to put the link right above here and how I color graded it. So just click on the link just above here to see what I did when I was doing those adjustments in both Capture One and Photoshop. So this is going to be a screen retouching tutorial. So basically I'm going to hit Command J twice in Photoshop to create two layers and I'm going to name this layer Low Frequency. And I'm going to name the upper layer High Frequency basically. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, as you can notice, I already did uh, the blemish removal or removing those tiny blemishes from the image. So you should always do that. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to select the low frequency layer and I'm going to make sure I remove or blur out the... Remember this layer only contains the colors or skin tone. So that is only what we want to achieve. Come to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur so basically we're going to move this slider so make sure you look for the area that has more textures than the rest of the image so for this case it is this nose area right here so move this radius as you're looking on the textures until they start uh, to disappear into the image so for this case i'm going to go with the radius of nine so for that case you can see we have remove the textures and you can no longer see the textures in this very image so come and click ok and come select the high frequency layer and activate it so since this is an 8-bit image i'm going to be showing you guys the differences between an 8-bit image and a 16-bit image and the frequency separation settings for both 8-bit and 16-bit image so you can see if i told you have 16 right here you're going to be using the 16-bit method and if at all you have 8 like I do, you're going to be using the 8-bit method. So come right here to image and come to apply image. So after doing so, if at all you have a 16-bit image, I'm going to come and select the low frequency layer. Come and change the blending mode from uh, multiply and change it to, if at all it is a 16-bit image, click add. The scale is going to be 2, offset 0, opacity 100% and click invert. So when you click invert, you're going to be getting the, Im the textures in the image. And if at all you have an 8-bit image, you're simply going to come and select the low frequency layer because we are stealing the textures from the low frequency layer. Change the blending mode from add to subtract. The scale is going to be 2 and offset 128. And make sure invert is not checked or marked and and you get the same results and you get the textures on this gray kind of layer come and select ok or click ok change the blending mode from normal uh, to linear light like that then put these two in a group by selecting them and hitting ctrl or command g on the keyboard and open this group so we're going to name this group uh, frequency separation like that so when I turn this on and off, you can see that there is no difference between the original image and the frequency separation group. I'm going to open the frequency separation group and select the high frequency layer. Come to the adjustments and create a black and white adjustment layer. And first of all, I darken it like that. So when I do so, I'm going to now select the low frequency layer. The reason for creating a black and white layer is because we would like to see all those areas that have an even skin tone transition remember skin retouching is more of blending or evening out the skin tones in a given image and we have created the black and red layer to help us see the areas that don't have nice transitions between the skin tones so come right under the brushes and select your uh, mixer brush tool then the settings come and make sure it is a clean brush and select this second option because we want the brush to be automatically cleaned by Photoshop when we are trying to blend different parts of the image since they have different colors or skin tones 
So wetness is going to be 9, load 75, mix 90% and the flow 100. Make sure sample oilers is not checked or selected and zoom in slightly and increase on the size of your mixer brush tool by using the brackets just after the P button on the keyboard either increase or decrease and start blending and when you're blending the skin tones make sure you blend the mid tones alone the highlights alone and the shadows alone and make sure you're on or you have selected the low frequency layer and just hold down or left click hold down and start harmonizing or blending those tones in those particular areas like that so basically that is what i am doing for blending or evening out on the uh, skin tones in this uh, particular image i hope you guys are learning and loving what i am doing right now so you have to keep on turning this on and off so you can see the before after before after so we're going to continue doing the same for the overall image so make sure you blend we have mid-tones right here I, i'm sorry if at all i'm doing this really fast because i don't want this tutorial to be a long one so make sure you blend the shadows like that and come to these shadows and blend them so when you come to the nose area come and blend these shadows right here and come this side and blend the tones right there like that and come this side and blend this beautiful highlight and right between the eyebrows so we are basically trying to harmonize or even out on the skin tones in these particular areas so that we can have nice transitions that are going to lead into a beautiful and overall uh, retouched image so come to the chin area and just blend that highlight we have some kind of shadows right here just blend them come right above the lip and make sure you blend each and every area of the skin remember skin retouching uh, tackles every single area of the image so make sure you blend every tiny detail in the image like that i hope uh, you're seeing and loving what we are doing for the skin retouching as usual turn this off and see the before and after before after i hope you're really loving the results right now so we're going to zoom out and now come to the black and white and activate it so make sure you're still selected on the low frequency layer and now you're going to blend these other or the rest of uh, the models body like that so make sure you blend each and every area because you don't want to leave any area and are uh, retouched and for this case i prefer to combine the two frequency separation methods and i'm going to be explaining that in a bit because every time i'm doing skin retouching i prefer to combine them and it gives me the best out of my retouched images and uh, the reason for using the mixer brush tool in the very first place is because it helps me harmonize or even out the skin tones and when we are going to be using the second method to basically fine tune the areas we may have missed out when we are using or blending using the mixer brush tool so i'm going to turn this off and i think we are done blending these areas so i'm going to zoom out so i'm just going to come right here and i'm going to get rid of this tiny line right there and come right here and just blend that too so i'm going to delete the black and white layer select it and hit delete come and select the low frequency layer and come and get my lasso tool so for the feather we are going to be using 22 pixels make sure and alias is selected and zoom in now you can now zoom in all the way and come and make a selection on the skin area of the model like that so make sure you make a selection according to the shape yeah of that particular area so you can now zoom out come to filter and come to blur and come to gaussian blur so it is going to give us the radius we had in the very first case so i'm just going to move this radius until we start getting a skin texture 
that is really nice for this image for this case i think uh, that is you have to zoom out and see if at all the image is not looking unrealistic or plastic i think that is okay hit okay and now come and make selections and apply it on the overall image so make sure you make those shapes according to a particular area right click and click on gaussian blur so make another shape like that right click and click on gaussian blur so you're going to come and make this beautiful shape right there right click and click on gaussian blur then come this side and do the same so you can see the way i'm drawing these shapes it's like i'm um, doing a skin sculpting or contouring basically the way i'm just drawing these shapes and if at all you feel like uh, the effect is too much on a particular area you can simply click shift ctrl f or shift command f to reduce on the opacity of that effect so basically that is how to use the lasso tool and i prefer to only use this method on the face because the face seems to have most more skin textures than the rest of the body i wouldn't want to use it on the lower part of the body of the model because it is going to be creating a more plastic image and when it comes to the nose area i know some retouchers tend to come to uh sorry come to this highlight and apply the effect but when you do apply it make sure it is really subtle and it is not too much so if at all i right click and apply the effect you're going to see that we have lost out on this beautiful highlight so come and click shift ctrl f or shift command f and just drop down the opacity if at all you want to add the effect on that area anyway so you can see we have now done the skin retouching on this image so you can see the before after before after that is for the skin retouching so we'd love to do or add shape or dimension to the image so we are going to, we are going to simply close the frequency separation group then come right here and come create a curves adjustment layer then come to select and come to color range get your eyedropper tool and make sure quick selection or quick mask is on and the selection mode is also activated and select the highlight first of all because you want to dodge dodging and burning is more of enhancing the highlights and the shadows in the image so come for a dodging select the highlights using your eyedropper tool and now click ok so come and make a midpoint right here in the curves and just move it up like that just briefly and now come back to the curves and you can simply make a second one so you can name it whatever you want so i'm going to come back to few, select sorry color range and i'm going to select the shadows in the image so for this case i'm going to go with that area so you can either reduce on the fuzziness until you feel like you have selected the shadows well click ok and after doing so come and make a midpoint and just drag down to a darken or enhance the shadows so you can see the before after before after so we are going to put these two in a group by hitting ctrl or command g and we're going to name this dodge and burn like that hit ok so basically this is the before and after so we want to color grade this image even more so we're going to come to the selective color and now reduce on the magentas under the reds just reduce it slightly to negative four and come to the blacks and also intensify on the blacks to around five and just drop down the yellows a little bit to negative three so this is the before and after so far so right now we want to quieten the eyes of the model we are going to create a stamp visible layer for this we have done so far click shift alternate command e or shift alternate control e on the keyboard and they're going to duplicate that by hitting control or command j on the keyboard then come right here to filter and come to camera filter then you are going to zoom into the eyes like that hold down the space bar key to move or to get a hand tool so i'm going to go with this one eye get the adjustment brush tool so since we have yellowness or color in the white area of the eye you're going to go to this slider and move towards the opposite of yellow and that is towards the blue side negative 28 tint we are going to go with around a tint of 65 because we want to retain the redness in the white area of the eye 
and the highlights are going to go with four because we want the eye to pop plus the whites to around five and since we have color we're just going to desaturate this slider to around negative 70 and we are going to be done so start painting over only and only on the white area of the eye like that uh, to whiten it remember it may have been uh, affected by the color grading process so just want to whiten the white area make sure you only paint over only and only the white area and you can as well enhance that beautiful catch light so hold down the space bar to get the hand and start moving around the image like that so you can as well whiten the teeth so i'm going to hit command minus to zoom out so after doing so we're going to hit ok on the keyboard or just down there or enter on the keyboard then we're going to come right down here to the photo filter option and come and cool down the image since it is looking really warm come to the cooling filter and select cooling 82 and now just cool it down like that so i'm just going to go with around i'm going to go with around nine for this very image and that is all for the skin retouching and if at all you want to see what we have done so far well we have done the skin retouching using frequency separation then we did the dodging and burning so i'm just going to show you guys an overview basically so we did frequency separation that's the before and the after then we did the dodging and burning to bring back shape or dimension to the image then we did a uh, color grading using selective color we created a sum visible layer by hitting shift alternate control e on the keyboard shift alternate command e on the keyboard then we did some little bit more of eye whitening and color grading then we also did uh, the image uh, to cool it down so basically that is what we did for the retouching of this image so basically for a retouching and color grading this this is the image before after before after so if at all you'd love to save your image so that it doesn't change in color after you have retouched it you can simply come to file export export as and remember we want to get a very sharp image that we want to save after retouching it basically so come right here to format and change it to jpeg of course then leave all these the way they are Resampling, make sure you select by cubic sharper because you want a sharp image and come right down here. This is where the magic is going to happen basically. Make sure you select convert to sRGB and embed color profile. And after selecting both options, just simply click export. And when you click on export, sorry, you, you, you click export, it is going to bring up this window. Just click whatever you want to save your image. I'm going to name this image tutorial and I'm going to click save and the image is going to be saved. So basically this is how I retouched this image in Photoshop and how I color graded it. And if I told you love this tutorial, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel. If I told you are watching from this channel for the very first time and you have never subscribed, I'm Ronix from Ronis Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more tutorials on this and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating.